Hey everyone, and welcome to an Invest, IronQuest feedback call. Um, my name is Sarah Bartlett. I'm the leader of the IronQuest project. And today we're going to be reviewing visits that were submitted for our recent Weird or Wonderful round. Uh, for this round, we were asking people to just look at topics that they thought were either weird or wonderful or both. Um, I think most of them we got were wonderful, not so many weird, but we'll have a look at what we have to review today. Um, so we have about 11 visits that we're going to review on this call. We're going to go in alphabetical order by author's name. Um, but before we start, I want to introduce my co-hosts. So I'm very fortunate to be joined by the leaders of the Her Data Initiative. So that's Danishki and Jennifer. Um, perhaps, ladies, you could introduce yourselves. Um, I'll start with you, Danishki, or AKA D, which I'll be calling you on this call. <laughs> sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Janushki. As Sarah said, a lot of people call me D. Um, I have been working on using Tableau for about six years now. I am um, lucky to call myself a Tableau ambassador. And um, I work at um, a company called Unifund. You might know a few of my colleagues. I work for Jeff Schaefer and with uh, Kevin Fleurledge. Tableau Legends, um, and uh, yeah, we Jennifer and I, I'm super happy and lucky to uh, collaborate with Sarah and Jennifer on um, this Iron Quest um, program. Thank you, Dee. And Jennifer, do you want to introduce yourself? Hey everyone, I'm Jennifer Dawes. Um, fun fact to do. Tanushki is the one that brought me to Tableau and the Tableau community. So I've been using it for, I guess, about five, six years, similar. Uh, I, I currently work as a senior consultant for Analytic Vision out of Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, yeah, I'm very excited and I cannot wait to review some of these businesses. Thank you, Jennifer, and thank you both. I, I'm so excited to work with you both. It's, you know, I, when I reached out to you about this topic and you were interested, I was so happy um, because I've been wanting to collaborate with both of you for a while. Big fans of your work um, and they're really super fortunate to have you on here today. Thanks for having us. All right, so let's, should we get to it? Um, let's see. Uh, let me go. I, I want to add a drum roll. <laughs> 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 All right, so we're going to kick things off with a viz from Akash, uh, and this is called My Tennis Odyssey. Hopefully you can see my screen. Um, so you, you can, can have yes. the public. All right, awesome. So in this viz, uh, Akash was looking at um, his his personal journey. So it's like a quantified uh, data viz, sorry, quantified self viz, looking at his journey playing tennis, uh, which he started eight months ago. Um, so if we just interact with the visit, it looks like we start in the middle uh, and then he notes down, you know, his level um, and shows his progression, uh, like in terms of skill over time. I love it. I feel I, I'm actually very impressed because he went from basic to advanced in basically one year, less than one year. So that's exciting, I guess. <laughs> Um, I do love that he has, you know, a nice little introduction about his story, and then um, it, it's it it's not a complicated chart to read, honestly. And I and I get the story pretty quickly, so I like that um, simplicity of it. Yeah, I think it looks nice. It's easy to understand, and I I love the fact he's got tool tips which give some additional context. So like. We can see he where he played for like one or two hours, or there's some days he didn't play because it was raining. And I, I just love that, you know, additional level of detail that he's brought to the story. Agreed. Yeah, I'll say I love the layout uh, and just the overall design. I think the first thing that catches my attention anytime I look at something or a new viz, just because I'm such a visual person, is like that overall design and theme. And does it speak? Does it grab attention? And so, yes, I, I really love the layout and the storytelling. It's very fun. Yeah, it is. And I think there's more to it. So um, he's got the right graph illustrates the days that I played or practiced tennis. Click here to change the view. So we can actually change it from that radial to, um, I guess you'd call this like a, a dot plot. Uh, like a, yeah. Yeah. Um, like a, almost like a marginal histogram. So we can see uh, the number of days that he played uh, by month. And I really love this summary because, it, you know, that the radio might not be easy for everyone to comprehend, whereas this is, is much easier to read. So you have those kind of the best of both worlds, I guess. 
Totally. Yeah. I love that. Simplifies it even further and makes it really easy to understand what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. I love a unit histogram. And so I, I think the radial is fun. It grabs the attention, being able to translate it into, well, what does that really look like by month? And then beyond that, the color really starts to tell a story and, and you can kind of see how the, the color and his um, how his skill advanced over time, whereas in the first radial chart, it felt more of design than story tell, whereas here it's definitely telling that story look, over the course of a couple of months, how he went from one level to the next, and you can see the number of days by each month, so I really enjoy this. Yeah, I agree. Now, I think if if he was to enter this for Ironviz, I, I mean, at the moment, we just have like the two charts. I would expect a little bit more, um, maybe some more elements, more more uh, kind of analysis of tennis and his his progression and that kind of thing but I think he's definitely on the right track agreed maybe like a like, little bit more detail like maybe when he learned how to serve or when he understood the game better or whatnot yeah yeah maybe maybe even some more detail just about tennis in general and um the things that he'd learned like you say just filling that in uh to complement what he already has here yeah, and defining basics, like I'm somebody that doesn't really know anything about tennis. Um, you know, I, I have, I've seen tennis, <laughs> but um, I, what is a basic tennis player, an intermediate and advanced? Um, just getting a little context because I'm somebody that I want to place myself into the story. Like, oh, this is really interesting, but I wonder how I would uh, measure up, right? Like if I tried tennis, what would that look like for me? Um, so I think having, like, we're, I think we're all saying just a little more detail, more layers of um, analysis would be helpful. Yeah, that's a very good point. I mean, does advanced here mean that he's like Rafa Nadal level? Like, I was just going to say that. <laughs> I don't even know what you just said. <laughs> Sports. Sports ball. See? Help me. Um, and not that, and like, I will agree, like, uh, not to go on a tangent, but like, not every work is for at all audiences. You know, this could be speaking to, but I think when you're talking Iron Viz, the goal, and that's kind of the feedback I was giving during the Iron Viz um, uh, feedback rounds with, you know, the goal is you want to appeal to the largest crowd possible, right? Because you don't know who's judging you. Um, so in this situation, you think about somebody who doesn't know tennis and how can you bring them into the story? Mm -hmm. I agree. I think for something like this as well, it might be nice to have a call to action. So to say, okay, so if you want to learn tennis, this is where you could mm -hmm. start or some resources you could go to, or maybe things you should work on, right? That he'd learned from his experience that he could help others with. Yeah. All right, uh, great job. So next fizz is by Brittany. And this is looking at the flavor distribution of 50 fruit snack packs. <laughs> I love this topic. It's, it's so fun. It's definitely weird and wonderful. I love it. <laughs> And I remember seeing this when she published and I absolutely love the topic. Yes, love the topic. As a mom, how do I not relate to that? The mixture of fruit snacks, because especially with twins, like they get really mad when they don't have the same color. So <laughs> it, this spoke to my heart in ways you guys can't understand. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because I know what Welch is mixed fruit snacks are that you can't really buy them in the UK only from Costco um but so I always try and get some for my daughter when I go to the US um and so this resonated with me as well um so I love how this first of all I like how it's presented almost like a business dashboard style mm -hmm. um I think that's really nice it's, it's typically not how we, you might always like see this data but I like how Brittany's like kind of kept it simple and you know, not put pictures in of different gummies and colored them all the color that you'd expect to find them. Yeah, I mean, it's very simple, easy to understand. You, you know, get get the idea really quickly. And I, I really like it. And I also have the commitment to having, you know, taking 50s fruit snacks and dividing them up and looking at all these, all the data. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and the interactions I'll say as I was kind of playing myself it were a lot of fun um and I so feel like this speaks to my heart in a way that uh, when I first started using Tableau and I was thinking if I had ever stumbled upon a topic like this I, I would have gone or wanted to lean towards heavy color right okay let me color it orange let me get it, the red and the peach and the uh but this 
very much speaks to the simplicity of color and how it just can be very design rich, even with simple color, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's what I mean. I think a viz like this could easily have become like uh, like a unicorn rainbow, you know, with all the colors yes. of the different gummies. And I think I really appreciate the fact that Brittany's just kept it blue, right? And it's simple and it's not like a rainbow. Um, I also appreciate the fact that she's actually gone in and, and made an effort to write sentences in the tooltips. Um, it's just that additional kind of attention to detail that I appreciate. Yeah. Love so it. what would be, let's say it was Iron Viz, which I don't think we necessarily are looking for, but what would be the things you guys would plug if this was an Iron Viz entry? Um, maybe some sort of a little bit of story, a little bit of background. Why are we doing this? You know, some sort of um, story to it, I think would be a nice addition, making it a little personal, maybe. Um, I like the analytics piece is there. Um, if I could give some feedback on the design, maybe to give it more of a grid look, um, it usually helps the eyes a little bit better. But that, yeah, that, that's about all I would have to say. Yeah, I would agree. I think more more focus on the the story and the overall narrative. Um, mm -hmm. like maybe some some background in the story, like, uh, did she eat them all, <laughs> or like, right. uh, what's, her, <laughs> what's her favorite flavor? Like, or did, did she get a bellyache? <laughs> <laughs> did she do this with other people? Like, you know, that kind of that, that additional narrative, I think, would be nice. Or like, just calling out, hey, like my favorite flavors peach and we saw the least peach like flavors mm -hmm. that kind of thing um and maybe just um more use of color to kind of um call out certain data points and maybe like highlighting that you know the strawberry bar because that was the biggest mm -hmm. um and yeah. some of the key points in in the scatter uh, the jitter plot as well 100 yeah i think the, back to the feedback for the first one is just ways that you can draw your user into the the viz and then I can't help but wonder why are there more strawberry? Like, is there a reason? I want to research this. <laughs> Maybe it's easier to produce a strawberry flavor. I don't know. That, that's not something for Brittany to solve for. So don't worry, Brittany. But like, I, I do want to go back and kind of look into that. <laughs> it's interesting looking at the number of gummies in each pack as well, because there's some variation there. And I guess that kind of thing would cause upset with, with your kids, Jennifer. Mm, right? For <laughs> sure. <laughs> So you There's never that... enough gummies in those packs. <laughs> <laughs> all right, anyway, great job, Brittany. Um, all right, so next up we have uh, Candice, and this is the cat's secret life. So I absolutely love this one. This this looks at, um, there's some trackers put on cats uh, at Adelaide University, and they actually looked at kind of like where the cats went, how many kilometers they traveled, um, the hours they were out uh, and that kind of thing and it's it resonates with me because um, my mum has a cat with a, has a tracker on it and uh, you can see where it's gone and it's, it's fascinating it the map looks like a child has just scribbled on a page that there's no like rhyme or reason to the, where the cat goes um, and it's I laughed when I saw this vid because it reminded me of that yeah I saw this one or looked at this one previously and absolutely love the um, the the theme like I love that it's cats I love the design the layout everything seems so beautiful but the one thing if I could offer any um constructive feedback is that would be styling the tooltips uh, I think everything has a very beautiful design and layout but just taking that step and kind of bringing it into the tooltips too would just been that extra bump for it I think um that's more of the iron this feedback right and not to be nitpicky but I, I think that's my previous entries where I may have failed to pay attention to that detail. Yeah, I absolutely love this too. It was, it was, so, it, I mean, it, it's a great iron this entry right here and there. Um, if, if I could give some feedback, it would be a little extra step, maybe in this one where it says, um, where, where it's got the little um, bar chart in the, kitty home maybe because you do have the detail of each and every cat maybe a little drop down um to be able to select a cat that you want to look at specifically if that makes sense 
yeah that makes sense because it's almost yeah you, it's difficult to look at right now because it is broken out right exactly um I do appreciate how um you know the, the overall styling is consistent throughout the viz um mm-hmm. the use of iconography is consistent as well but I agree I think a little bit more attention to detail on some of the vizes and just making sure that the formatting is cleaned up and that kind of thing I think could help um I'd also be careful about like accessibility um in terms of like the coloring and particularly like where we've got um colors or um something on the background image uh, mm-hmm. in some cases it makes like what's in the foreground a little bit difficult to read um so I'll just check that 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 is accessible as well yeah but overall, I think this is a great iron base. The story is there, the design is there, and the an- analysis is there. Yeah, I think what I love, what was so fun about this to me is it's unexpected. It's the whimsy of it, the topic, you know, I, I think it's out of the box and I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. There was another viz like this released around the same time. So there was this like surgeon, like cat tracking visits. Um, I thought was <laughs> it's, it's kind of ironic but it is funny I mean if you look at the map there it, it, it's my mom's cat does exactly the same thing they just seem to go all over the place uh which is funny and then That's you have awesome. these occasional like like almost like outliers where they go further away which I think is super interesting all right uh great job um next up we have Caroline uh, and this is looking at uh, UFO sightings So I love a good UFO viz. <laughs> yeah, me too. So here we're looking at a radial um, by by year, or that's by date, sorry, of mm-hmm. um, where the UFO sightings were reported. Um, I'm going to click one. So if I click one, we get a, a map of of where they were in the US. Um, and then I think we can hover, yeah, and get additional detail, what they saw. I love it. I mean, just the radio, um, look of it is, is cool. It's, um, weird and wonderful, I think, and hovering over it, giving that, um, extra layer of detail with the map. I love if I could be, um, nitpicky i would maybe ask if when it when you're not clicked on it if the map if we could have a map in the middle that shows all of them that way you kind of get an idea of what the large scale um looks like on a map which could be kind of fun to see Mm -hmm. i like how she's um highlighted the 4th of july as like kind of a a key day to point because you can see as you'd expect i guess um you have these outliers here, which I think, um, you know, helps add to the story, even without like calling out any specific narrative around that. Love it. Yeah, I do think it's eye catching. Like I, I always think about that thumbnail. What is that thumbnail going to look like when you publish it up? So what a wonderful uh, pop of color to grab the user's attention. Um, I myself always feel like I struggle with how do I help the user understand how to navigate, which I do see she's got arrows trying to tell the user where to go, what to click on. Um, so I appreciate that too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a lot more to the viz. So if we go down, um, we've got the data broken out in different ways. And again, she's she's highlighting the 4th of July and particular ones. Um, it's just basically different cuts of the data and and then looking in more detail what they actually saw, which in the same kind of radial fo- uh, format, which is nice. Really nice, yeah. I really love the, yeah, the curvy bump chart with the um, radial chart, like small multiples. Like I like to break it out that way. Now we're breaking it out by what exactly are they seeing? Um, that's very fascinating. Yeah, it's funny. What that... a topic I know nothing about. And it's just, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, no, go ahead. It's fine. No, I was just going to say, it, it, gosh, if, if anything I could do could grab somebody's attention and then they like become intrigued and want to dig into the topic and understand more, like that, that's achieving a lot, I think. And this is definitely a, a fun 
um, as she's offering the different cuts of the similar data, but then digging deeper as you scroll really brings me into the the topic and the story, right? Yeah, and it's a great uh, example of storytelling because if you look at her titles, um, they're almost like questions. We've got one here, like what are people seeing, and then that's answered both mm -hmm. with the with the narrative, uh, which is calling out the key points, and then the um, the the actual charts as well. If I so a quick thing in 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 this chart, it shows that a specific type, right? Form of like fireball flat. Okay, so she's highlighting those with a particular color, but she's using that same color up top to show Fourth of July. So that could get a little bit um confusing instantly. So yeah, so if we could use a different color to show something different, it might be easier for the user to um, you know, quickly understand that there isn't a connection to 4th of July in this section. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Sense. Yeah. And then if we scroll right down to the bottom, we have this, um, what would you call this? Like a hex map? map hex -ish, yeah, hex but it's not a hex. <laughs> Square, Square map. map. <laughs> Square map. <laughs> So what are your thoughts on this? I think the first thing I'm trying to digest is the color of this inner square against the outer square, which I'm... Is there a legend at the bottom or anything like that? Uh, there yes. we go. Yeah, Number is, of yeah. sightings versus ranking sightings. I would consider maybe putting this at the top um, because I, I, I didn't scroll down far enough and kind of missed it. So maybe just putting that at the top so it's the first thing that you see. Um, or even having like a how to read section might help interpret yeah. it a little bit better. And I would also consider giving some space between the squares, because if you look at the bottom, um, you know, the LAMS, uh, AL, they kind of blend in together and you can't really see the difference in the outer lining. So I would consider giving a little bit of space in between the squares. Yeah, outline it or have some space or, you know, it's funny as I'm trying to digest rank and sightings per 100,000 and the number, like what is the, what is the relationship with that then? So darker blue means, I think higher. it's like, okay, higher. yes. Yeah. Higher rank. So like a, so a, if you're rank number one, then, which I think is, Washington state mm -hmm. um, that has the most number of sightings per, yeah. per 100. Okay, so then I almost would rotate that um, that label for the color legend because one is low, which I know we're talking rank, but at the dark the color, the more the sightings, right? So number of sightings would be dark green, meaning more than dark blue is more. So even though it's a one for rank, I think I would have rotated that legend to kind of help users understand the darker the color regardless if it's blue or green the more the sightings yeah I get that yeah I agree it's always an issue with rank um I've I experienced it when doing like visits on like music charts because num being first or like number one in the charts is good but when you yeah. try and visualize that it's really difficult right yeah you just kind of have to stop yourself for a second and process what you're what you're seeing, what you're thinking you're seeing, and then kind of read it again, which, yeah, like you say, when you're mixing number versus rank, it, it can, it just takes an extra second, so. Yeah, I do like how, um, for this chart, though, there is, she's added annotations that add some additional context, so she's, like, pointing out her home state, and also just, um, like, California as the most reported sightings, uh, and that, just adding that additional, like, level of detail, which I think is nice. Yeah. And there's more. I love it. Overall, <laughs> I love the topic. Yeah, I love the topic. I love the design. Yeah, I mean, this list goes on forever. Um, there's a ton of stuff here. This is the kind of level that we expect to see in an IMVIS entry. Yes. Um, it's got that's it's got kind of all the elements you would expect. And I also love how the 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 font is kind of on brand for the topic as well. Hundred percent. I was thinking the same thing. Um, and I love someone that pays attention to, um, 
the, the font type for your subject. And, and like I was saying before, even with like the tool tips, making sure it is designed to fit your theme. Like I love when it's at that level of detail because you're expecting a complete, the complete check in all the boxes. So yeah, I agree. Yeah. And she's wrapped it up by like asking like, the audience, like, well, what do you say? Like, do you believe? And I think that's, that's a really way, a nice way to kind of wrap up the biz. Yeah. agree. It feels complete. Yeah. No, excellent job. All right. So next up, we have a viz by Deepa, and this is looking at the top 50 fast food chains. Ooh. So D, I think this is your specialist subject, right? Food. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> food and fast food, too. <laughs> OK, so. I love that even though we're talking about fast food, the, the little icon looks like a very healthy vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> it's not all bad, people. <laughs> I'm just taking some um, time I, to like interpret it. So. So, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think some of um, some of my feedback would be white space. I think there's a lot as I look at this, there's a lot here, which is wonderful. Um, a lot, a lot of um, information. I think to digest it, and I, I was recently talking about white space with a coworker, and I said I used to get really frustrated when people would say that to me. So I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Um, but I like it the way I have it. Uh, there's a lot of um, play with design, but I think because we don't have enough space and white space between, it, it does take a, a few seconds to decide what am I looking at, what's where. Um, so making it even a little bit bigger and, and spreading some things out may have helped. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. I'm um, also, uh, there's a pie chart right on top. I would try to make that a bar chart only because it is sliced in about it like more than five pieces um pie chart should be no more than two if I could have my own opinion um but I would make that a bar chart because that way it's easier to understand um the differences and compare the different uh, food chains with each other yeah and the, what's been shown in the pie is is essentially what we have in these in these squares here so I think yeah. I would just probably just replace that with a bar chart and yeah the two, the or add things. the percentages right there um in those little boxes yeah and you know if we're going for iron viz you could have done bar for the top five uh highest sales and top five um store units but just to play off a few ideas you could have done also um scatter plot you know is there what does it look like for the ones that have high high sales and um th then you can kind of see the play of the two axes right um so that may have been something interesting. Again, not trying to completely deviate, but it definitely is a fun topic. Mm -hmm. yeah, for the actually, that's, sorry, go ahead, Sarah. No, you go ahead. I think um, what Jennifer said would help with the analytics piece of um, something that's very important. And, and, and the analytics piece is important in when you create an iron viz. Um, viz. So using, instead of putting those numbers in just boxes and letting you know what it is, why don't we make it analytical and put it in a chart? Mm -hmm. And then we could play with things like visual, um, like say pre attentive attributes like size and color and things to like right. call out. <laughs> um, maybe you could size them by the number of store units, for instance. Um, at the moment, I think we, we only have one chart here, which is the pie chart, right? Everything else is almost just like bands or at, at the table. Mm -hmm. So I think more visual elements would be good. Um, on the on the table on the right, um, I was trying to interpret uh, what year we were comparing the change of units to. So like, it's actually, it's actually 2020 to 2021. Um, mm -hmm. that could perhaps be shown in something like uh, maybe a slope graph. So we could see that increase visually rather than having to scroll um, up and down the chart and like, interpret the numbers that are being shown. True. I do like that they have given us a search feature where you can enter your favorite and then maybe we can see it only, only that one specifically. Um, but also the, the use of red and green here with the arrows, I would try to use uh, some other colors because some people could be colorblind and that could, you, you might not see um, a difference between those two colors. 
but you might not need to because you already have up and down arrows. So maybe there isn't a need to put red and green. Oh, I need yeah. to Yeah. And part of me just wonders if some of this would pop even more with just taking the background to white, like leave your header, leave this, leave some of the elements. But if the background was white rather than um, like the brown orange color, maybe some of these pieces may pop more. And if um, it was made a little bit bigger, um, had a little more space, like you're saying, Sarah, to do some um, more visualizations. When I create something, I tend to think of like the end user. And for me, and like the role that I'm in as a, a consultant, my end users are business this folks that yes they like their spreadsheets but they want to be able to look at it and quickly digest and so pros and cons to having a, a table chart like this versus like we're saying a bar chart where they can quickly look at it grab oh so it's wendy's or mcdonald's and be able to make that assumption make the assumptions right yeah i agree um another thing that the author's done really well is um they've added in like um call outs and commentary um, like kind of dotted around the top. I think it would be great if that could be brought closer to the actual detail in the viz or the chart or whatever, whatever it is. Um, because the reason that I say that is because I was, I, I was drawn to this piece up here about Jersey Mike. I've never even heard of Jersey Mike's. I, I don't know if it's something that you have in your state, but um, and, and Sarah, I was- Sarah, next time you come and take Jersey Mike's. <laughs> But I was curious, so I was like looking for a Jersey mic uh, in this list, and it's like all the way down, like it's quite a long way, some way, long way down the list. Um, but it just adding that that kind of call out to, next to the data, I think, would be helpful rather than having it kind of dotted around the top. Mm -hmm. All right, Ooh. well, great job. Um, I love how different these all are. It's completely different topics. I know it's such interesting topics. So the next one we have is by Hush Harvardhana. Hopefully I didn't butcher your name. Um, and this one is on Coffee Wars. So looking at Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts, and Tim Hortons, um, and then comparing them. I love it. I love it. it. It's very um, visually very creative, I will say, to start off with. But it's also quite hard to read and understand what those tiny little slivers are at the uh, very beginning of um, the visual. But I think he does have an alternative view. Let's click the alternative Which is view. Okay. Nice. Okay, yeah. So one quick thing that I... Um, it's starting out with using Tableau, creating visualizations, I tend to feel if you ever have to tilt your head to read, just rotate your bar chart. This could have served as um, a longer versus taller bar chart. And you, rather than having to have sideways labels, um, you could have done some play there. Uh, but definitely fun to see Starbucks as uh, highest number of locations. Right, by a yeah, mile also. Like, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I would also pay attention to the colors. I don't think that we need to color every single um, coffee shop. Uh, um, th th at this point, there isn't a huge advantage in color giving each one a different color. So I would consider having all of them just one color and maybe maybe the top five or the top 10 or maybe it's just Starbucks um, with a different color to highlight them. I agree. And I like the effort to create this as an overlay with a transparent background because you have the title still there and the, I like it, but maybe play with the opacity a little more because the text kind of gets lost at the tail end there um, from the subtitle on the previous page. Yeah. Um, I like the idea. I just think maybe playing a little more, uh, I don't know about looking at your screen versus I was looking at it on another screen. It, it can get a little difficult to read. Mm -hmm. I agree. And just one more thing on the on the bar chart. We have rounded bars here, so they're they're always a little bit risky. I mean, because it's you have that rounded section which almost extends the bar a little bit more. But also when the bar is very small, which a lot of these are, like for the smaller coffee shops, it it makes it near impossible to compare the individual bars because they all look the same. Um, so I'd consider maybe just going back to traditional bars. I know they're boring, but um, 
I think if you wanted to really drive that visual home, I think that that would be more effective. And then additionally, um, if we're thinking for Iron Biz, obviously we would say the storytelling, the analysis a little further. The one thing that I think would be really fun to pull in is um, where it, are these Starbucks located? Like, are is there overlap? Um, like some more play with uh, what these other locations are and is Starbucks have the most locations because they also have the largest global footprint? What does that look like, right? Or is it just an oversaturation in the U.S.? I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what what country. I mean, I'm assuming this is the U.S. because it, the the initial set um, kind of statement says Starbucks, Dunkin', and Tim Hortons are the three largest coffee companies in the world. Now, in, I know in the mm. U.K. we have Starbucks, but we don't really have Dunkin' Donuts, and certain we don't have Tim Hortons. Um, yeah, maybe a little map would have been fun to look at. Yeah, and now with this, the coffee cup biz. Um, I don't know the, uh, what to call it, but it's, I was trying to like hover over, um, I've broken it. Um, yeah, I've broken it, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but that was, oh, here we go. I was trying to hover over and see like which, which one was which, but I think it, it looks like the tooltip isn't working like quite right because I think the orange section is Starbucks. But then if I hover over the the purple, that it, for a minute, it's still Starbucks, or maybe it's just slow. Um, but I would consider, I know this is nice. I know it's in the coffee mug, but I, I, I don't think it's the best way of kind of showing this data. I agree. And and also, if if you were to make some tweaks and still want to absolutely have something like this, where the slivers get really tiny and you can't hover over them to even look at a tooltip, I would consider putting all of it on one tooltip so that you can compare them just from the tooltip itself. Mm, that's a great idea. All right, let's keep moving on. Um, so the next one is by Jessica Moon and it's on Emily in Paris. I've actually never watched Emily in Paris. I know it's on Netflix, um, but I guess the title says it all, right? It's good. <laughs> So for, I, I really, I really, really I love, love how, yeah, it's so like glam and perfect for the theme. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just like scrolling down to like take it all in. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, so there's so much. So here. what's funny is. <laughs> this is personal, not really feedback, but like the two <laughs> charts that I've been wanting to play more in were like the beast form kind of chart that she has here at the bottom and the network chart. I love that those are the bottom two that she has. Um, because I, I think where a bar chart can serve, it's usually my go-to in terms of um, business dashboards, but for something like this, definitely playing with other um, ways to look at it. Um, as long as it's still, you can understand the comparison, but for a topic like this, it's really fun. Um, yeah, it's, I absolutely love the the violin plot and how it's been applied as like a dress. I think that's, I think it's awesome. Yeah. It's just so creative. Um, yeah, and agree, I, I love the, the bee swarm. Um, I think it's a great way of showing this data. I also appreciate the tooltip. Again, some effort has been put in there and you can actually click through and see the, the Instagram posts as well, which I thought was really love nice. That. And I love the little call outs all over the place, you know, dragging attention to some important little tidbits. Yeah, everything was well explained. And like, like here, it says like click here to see a post. It's nothing that's kind of left um, like to the author's kind of, sorry, to the viewer's imagination. Like where do I, how do I interact? Yeah, agreed. Could you cross scroll up to the top, Sarah? Yeah. I was a little confused with the stars. Is there any um, axis or any rhyme or reason to the placement of the stars or are they just hanging out? Okay, it looks like that is, right? Because it goes from season one to season three. So if I, I know it might not look the nicest, but if there is a creative way to show the axis, it might um, help the user read it easier. Yeah, I agree. 
I do love the um, Eiffel Tower with, um, you know, data on the Eiffel Tower. Looks like it, it's a, the bar charts, right? Yeah, and However, this is a Mar this is a Marimekko, right? I think this is a Marimekko chart. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, because we're looking at the the okay. the um count the count of Emily. So the um count. so the number of they have said Emily and said Paris, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay, okay. So in season it. one, they said Emily and Paris a lot. They continue saying Emily a lot, but less so Paris in the subsequent seasons. Got it. Okay. I like it. Super creative. Yeah. I think this is like, super, yeah, like I think we were discussing this at the beginning before we started recording, but I think this is super creative and um, it's totally on theme for like wonderful. Um, and I think if this was entered for Ironviz, it might lose some points uh, around like maybe best practices and, you know, maybe this isn't aligned with some of the criteria in terms of how charts should be presented. But I think at the same time, it is on the theme. It's super fun. It's easy to read and everything's explained and it's it's pretty easy to understand. Totally agree. And if you wanted to combat that issue, you could have a little toggle which changes it to a simple bar chart. Yeah, you could. That would just take the weight the fun away. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I love and this I, network and chart. The, yeah, the network chart's awesome. Um, I know these aren't easy to do, um, so appreciate that. For sure. Yeah, nice. excellent job. Love it. All right. Um, moving on, um, we've got one by Lucia, and this is the world as I know it. So this viz looks at um, how Lucia has like traveled around the world. It's almost like a scratch map um, where mm. you scratch off the places you've been. So, um, you know, she's she's scratched off the the country she's been to around the world, and the color um, corresponds with how long she spent there. So we can start by looking at my world, and uh, we have. The individual cities and then mm -hmm. some commentary ar around like where she went and why and that kind of thing i love it um if i could uh be critical i'm not sure what the different colors mean or okay so she has mentioned what the colors mean in the first um the first view but not in the last view yeah. So maybe we could translate, we could have the legend in the uh, my story as well, just so people don't have to keep going back and forth to understand what those colors mean. Yeah, I agree. Also on the map, I'd be super careful um to turn off scrolling because I unless you want it, I'm in this case, I guess, but I can like scroll in and out, um, which I don't think we need here. I think the, the idea is is you have it as a as a fixed view so you can see. At a high level, the, the the world and the countries that you've been to, so I'll just switch that yeah. off in the settings. Um, yeah, for sure. And I think her intention with this was so that she could keep going back to it and updating it, which I thought was a really nice idea that she like traveled to more places. Um, I really love that too. It's so cool. Like I've always wanted to have a scratch map like on, on my wall. Um, however, if if I would maybe consider adding the um borders in the my world view mm -hmm. um and then have the ones that she's been to colored in just because it it kind of feels um a little bare and um just kind of floating if, if that makes yeah. sense so i was gonna I, say I that yeah they're yeah. kind of floating there and it, you don't really have you don't grasp like how many countries she hasn't been to right or, or right exactly. because you can't you can't see them um i do like how she's got the bands at the top um just to give that summary um this is a typical advice we give to people when they're designing business dashboards as you provide the summary data first before going into the details so that i like how that's here um yeah and i do appreciate that the story tab uh, which adds that additional kind of context to uh, um you know, her personal story around why she traveled, where she went, why she went there. Um, I think that it just brings that data to life. Yeah, super nice. Yeah. 
All right. Love it. Next phase is by Patrick. And this one is looking at um, John Hughes films defining a decade. Okay, nice. I already love the like theme of the whole this. It looks very old timey and um, yeah, like gives me that whole old timey film feel. Yeah, it's really love nice. Love the tool tips. Tool tips are really good. Um, I love how the attention to detail has been uh, focused on there. Yeah. And a lot of, some people always miss this, but he has uh, how to read at the bottom of that chart to show, I, I'm guessing what the rest of it is going to be like. And I love that because a lot of people make interesting, beautiful charts, but it's so hard to understand how to read it. And he has explained it very um, thoroughly in here, showing all the elements that we are about to see. Yeah, so it's very detailed, but I think just having that there makes it easy to understand. Um, I'm just this. This is fantastic. It's, there's so much to it's this, so and good. Yeah. everything is like really well explained. That everything is interactive, so you can. And it's the interaction is explained as well, which I appreciate. Um, the so tool tips are awesome, clean. and I love the design of these little cards. I think they look really good. I do too. It's Lots cool. of little attention to detail stuff that I really appreciate. Yeah, absolutely. Super nice. There is um, there is a nice flow to it. There are good directions. There is a nice little um, blurb about him and a little background, which is really nice. Um, may I'm, I haven't read all of it, and I'm, I might be missing this, but maybe a little um, connection as a, a, maybe a little personal connection to it might help for the storytelling piece. But since I haven't read it thoroughly, I don't think I can um, offer that yet. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, I'm just checking that what else is here so so many things yeah I, don't, I, don't, I like want to click on it all but I know it's going to take me to other sites um yeah I guess it, just yeah like that personal touch like why why John Hughes is important to Patrick or yeah. maybe why his favorite film by John Hughes I think that that would be it would be a nice touch as well yeah but yeah, I love, I do, I, I really like these cards. <laughs> I keep saying it. Yeah, I love, awesome. I love it. It's yeah, so on theme. Yeah. And, I, and guess, I think the analysis piece is there and the design piece is there spot on. Yeah, I guess if this was entered for Iron Viz, maybe some more um, narrative or maybe a, additional kind of charts or visuals showing a little sure, bit more yeah. detail would be expected just for that. I think the analysis bit is there, but I think it might need a little bit more. Um, from an okay. iron biz perspective but it's still an awesome biz and I don't want to yeah to take that away from that Love all right it. um all right, we've got two more to go so we have one by Priyanka which is man versus food Ooh. <laughs> sorry not Priyanka Priya sorry um Priya. yeah so this one I, I'm I'm sure you've seen the show man versus food yes like, yes <laughs> So I, I love it. I had like flashbacks looking at this because that's it's pretty old that show, right? Um, it yes, but I, yeah, I remember watching it like way back. Um, so I thought this is quite an interesting like data set. Can you hover over the bars? Sarah? Yeah. So um, okay, I don't have any additional detail there. So it's basically um, the challenges that he's won. Uh, with a time limit, without a time limit. Um, yeah, maybe it could have been fun to add what the challenges were. Yeah, and then the food one. So I guess that's essentially him losing, right? Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's perfect man versus food. So he has the man scores and he has the food scores. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I'd like to see what he was trying to like eat that he right. won or lost. Yeah. 
little bit more detail might have been fun. And then we have uh, challenges per state. So like, okay, and a breakdown of um, who won. Who won. I love how this is like the, uh, I don't know what you call these things, but the uh, the design of the the icon is like the. Yeah, the that, little food shaper thing. Yeah, yeah. Creative. And then. Um, uh, if I could be nitpicky about that, maybe I would try to add the label of the state somewhere because, you know, it, mm -hmm. it can be a little tricky if you are trying to look for a particular state. Yeah, especially it, this being like a non-traditional map as well. Um, right. I would also, cons uh, while I like the icon, I might consider just removing the spoon and just leaving the yeah. um, the, the, the silver dish. thing. The, I don't know what yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, because the, I think the, the spoon, you know, adds additional like visual complexity, whereas just having that silver thing on its own, I think yeah. might have... Um, just made it a little bit easier to read. Agreed. But I do appreciate the consistent use of color. Um, yeah. We're keeping to the orange and the the, the purple throughout. Um, yeah. So here we're looking at um, we're quantity, heat, limits. cold, sweet. Okay. So here we are getting a little bit more insight as to what the challenges were. Yeah, still not the exact food, but we get... Right. He had to eat a lot. He had to eat, um, I guess, with heat, we're talking like spice. Yeah. Right? Um, cold, like ice cream. Yeah. And, yeah. Then, and then like sweet dishes. And is there something additional in the tooltip? Looked like it was um, load something. Oh, it's just no. a vision oh, okay. just showing number of challenges, I think. Yeah. Um, and then if we go down, we can see um have set the other oh, different the seasons. seasons. That's okay, where he went each yeah. season and how he performed. Nice. Which is cool. Oh, so we do yeah, get some additional like detail here, be... like around the challenge. Yeah. Which is cool. Nice. Stuffed, stuffed pizza. Great steak. Yikes. <laughs> Sounds very filling. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. And we've got some more. Okay. So we, we do have some more detail. I wonder oh, wow. if we filter. I, I guess this isn't going to contain everything, but I'd love this for if it's available, like for each sliver of those bars, just to show what it is he was tackling I think that would be nice to bring it all together agreed agreed yeah and I love that she has like a real picture of it which like gives you a nice idea of what he was eating yeah see. four pound pancake goodness <laughs> oh, that's that was really good <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> Yeah, I guess what we don't yeah. have we don't have here who won so we right that's yeah does it say that no it's some of the challenges but from them it's got conquer okay. element is quantity right that that would make sense but it doesn't actually say the outcome which is a shame yeah. But I love it. I mean, it, it's it's very interesting. You want to keep going. You want to see what the different foods were. And it, it keeps you entertained. Yeah. I think this would be nice to compliment somebody who was watching this, the, the series. So they could come to the For viz sure. and, and or maybe even just pinpoint an episode they wanted to watch. So maybe if they go to your state, you could go and have a look when he went to the state and where he went to eat and how he got on, that kind of thing. Agreed. And maybe at the bottom to wrap it all up, there could be some sort of nice conclusion or a link to the show or something like that too. Yeah, I think we have that. So we've got, I guess this is Data Source, Twitter. This one, I think this is just actually just a logo. But yeah, a link yeah. out, a link out to watch the shows, which I don't think. No, we don't have anywhere that I can see. Yeah, yeah I agree. Like um just a sec like a call to action section to go and yeah go and watch them would be nice but 
I do like the design. Um, I guess I'd just pay a little bit more attention to some of the tooltips would be my advice. Um, try and like incorporate the color legends into the actual um, storytelling where you can rather than having a separate legend. Like yeah. here, I think I'll try and incorporate that in. I think we can, there's a button to show and hide it, but I would try and incorporate that into the design and maybe just have some annota yeah. annotations that call out um totally particular things like we can i'm struggling to what i'm struggling to get from this chart is and it's just the, the chart design i guess is like what particular challenges did he more often fail at right and i think mm -hmm. the, just the way this chart is shown it, it's not so easy to get that kind of i answer. agree there isn't like a pattern that you can catch or anything like that no so i think he did better with sweet um dishes because we can see he only failed one out of six but then as a ratio or percentage I'd like to understand you know that's a great how that point. looked compared to the other ones yeah maybe a little um percentage over to show how much he won and didn't win yeah 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 love that idea but great job anyway yeah um, super fun topic as well sure. um and then we have one last viz, which is by um, Vasan Bid. Yeah. Bid. Oh, okay. Oh, I, I love it when people go by different names. Yeah. <laughs> different things. <laughs> <laughs> we'll call you Bid uh, for the purpose of the video. But this one's looking at the Even Song Cup, um, which is focused on uh, composers. I know nothing about this topic. I actually did some background reading. Oh, nice. Um, I'm a little bit unfamiliar as well. I thought you I'm might intrigued. be more familiar because you've done visits on. I know. I know of this I topic because like, does my read <laughs> one know? Um, but this is I. There's a there's a context menu with some additional information which I thought was super helpful. Very my nice. my feedback on this would just be, make the font a little bit bigger because it's quite difficult to read with such a small font, and I Definitely. imagine that was just because he he was trying to fit everything in the the view. But um, I think in essence, um, in 2020. Wow a conductor embarked on a mission to determine the most beloved choral anthem in the Evensong repertoire and he did this via Twitter and there's a website and everything that kind of looks at wow I think very Vogue. interesting yeah so super interesting I again I know nothing about this but um if we go through it we can see kind of the composers where they came from and their gender um so we have like the the women shown in as like red little little women mm -hmm. and then the the men shown as blue men i do appreciate that um th they haven't used like the standard pink blue colors yeah but, uh, agreed uh, i don't know if the red blue works maybe um, yeah usually we use red to like alarm someone a call you know uh, an alerting it's kind of an alerting color so maybe something not so harsh and out there could be a bit have been a better pick yeah yeah and I and I like so we have the the like the unit chart showing like the the, the number of people by country we also have that information shown on the map so it's almost the same um kind of information shown in mm. two different ways I might consider kind of either bringing them all together or showing one or the other, maybe having one in a tool tip or something like that. Um, and if I was going to show the bars, I'd probably flip them. So the UK was shown first because that had the most. And that's typically how we look at charts. You want to see like the one with the the highest number first uh, as you go down. So yeah. I'd probably flip the the order. But and because this UK, I mean the majority I think were from the UK, um, and That's it just good. seems to go on forever, like all the way down the bit, like right, right, right down. So I just might wow. consider, you know, another way of showing this, uh, yeah, data, right, because it kind of loses its context. Or even, right, totally agree. Or even like on the top, maybe having a label, because if not, to be able to understand how many composers are in the UK, you would really be counting a long way down. Yeah, and I think if I wanted to just see that, it's on oh, the map. Okay, so, so 69, yeah. And then 24% were female. Um, yeah, again, on the map, make sure it's fixed so I can zoom in and out. Um, yes. So if we go down and just look into this a little bit more, 
Um, so we've got the, the top 20 okay. anthems by total votes. Um, I think colour is being used to mean multiple to things in this talk biz. About two different things. Yeah, yeah. so I think Agreed. the red here doesn't signify that they were all female, right? I can tell by the names they're not all female. Um, <laughs> so I'd be careful with the the colour use. Make sure it's have distinct colours for each thing um, that you're trying to show. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting chart, though. God. Yeah, I, I think it's an interesting chart, um, but we definitely need to um, pay attention to that uh, colour choice. Yeah. Also, I you know, it, it's showing one thing, right? So it's showing that the top 20 anthems and the number of votes they had. I think in this format, it makes it particularly difficult to read because your your eyes are going like right to left, right to left, right. Right. And with a bar chart, what you want to be able to do is compare like the length of the bars against each other. And the way this is shown makes that kind of like near impossible because you can only compare each other one, right? So I think while it looks cool, I might just consider reverting to a, a traditional bar chart because I think that would be more effective. I completely agree with you, Sarah. I think it would be way easier to read it the other way. But because it does look cool, I'm just going to give benefit of a doubt <laughs> here. The fact that they have put the label on, I, I appreciate that. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like, yeah, no, I honest, agree. He, yeah. Yeah. But I totally agree with you. Simpler, it depends. It depends what effect they were going for, right? And I think adding the labels is awesome. Um, but if precision yeah, is important, sure. then maybe that's you know it's not the best choice. Agree. Agree. Um, so I was just going to say as well, we have this awesome. above this chart. We have this kind of um, like call out, like almost like bands that says you know gives some context yeah. to how many votes were cast. I don't think that I don't feel like that's in the center. So I might just make sure that that's um, in the center of my viz. Yeah, and if I'm not mistaken, it's very, very close to the color of the, the male. So I'm almost confused to say that, oh, does that ha have something to do specifically with the males? Yeah. So definitely paying attention to what the colors um, uh, represent throughout the entire viz is really important, I feel like. Absolutely, I think we see the same thing at the top. Um, with the, with mm -hmm. these numbers as well. Now, I think there's more to this viz. That this is just the home page. Oh, so we nice. have um, matches. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the colors mean here. Yeah. Or even um, interesting. Okay. Or even how we read this. What the dots represent. So they are changing. The the chart at the top is changing when I hover. Yeah, I guess just some additional like context. I mean, even these bars, they're not. Um, there's no kind labels. of labels. There's no labels. There's no headers, legends, axes, whatever. Um, yeah. So I might just explain that a bit more. Oh. Yeah, um, and if if this is explaining it, I would put the explanation on top before you get into the chart, so that you read the explanation and then you know exactly what you're looking at. Agreed. Yeah. Um, cool. And then we have more of a breakdown. Nice. And then I'm going to go through this just quite quickly because there's a lot here. Composers, so composers. By age. That's interesting. Yeah. Wow. So I appreciate there's there's a narrative that kind of explains what's being shown and calling out key points, yeah. which is great. Um, and we can even click through and play the recordings, which is awesome. So if I click maybe different one, it should change, hopefully. Maybe not. Oh, no, it, um, it did change. Something changed. It changed. I would thought the video would change, but. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, so it seems oh, to be nice. different sites. So yeah, it does work. Yeah. Um, cool. Nice. And then finally, the results. So this is interesting. This is broken out by round. 
I guess it's the total number of votes they got in each round. Yeah. Right, which is, and then the star. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, again, if if we got a little bit more context in the beginning to, to on how to read the chart or what it's talking about would help a lot. Yeah. But the axis of the bottom it definitely helps. I would put that at the top. <laughs> Yes. So, <laughs> so it's the first thing that we see because I'm like, huh? What? And then it makes total sense as you scroll down. But yeah, add, just add anything like that to the top. Um, so it's the first thing people see. So then it, you know, and maybe even have it at both the top and the bottom. So because once you scroll down, you can't see the top anymore. Um, yeah. Yeah. I There's a lot here. It's very interesting. Yeah, it's super comprehensive. Uh, I like how it's split out onto different views um, to, rather than having like a super long dashboard. Um, and there's a lot, there's a, a good use of white space as well. That everything is is spread out um, and give, give them room yeah. to breathe. I would definitely pay attention to the little design um, tidbits. I would pay attention to some of the analytics, but there's a good amount of analytics here and definitely storytelling to for us to be able to understand what's going on and kind of um, flow with the um, whole dashboard. Yeah, and just visualization. agreed. And just remember that some people might be coming at this like us with no knowledge of this yeah. kind of topic. So maybe just some context around. I know there's some additional context in the information icon, but more around the topic and, um, you know, what even song is, that kind of thing um, would be helpful. Yeah. Yeah, but great job. And that was great our job, last yeah. one. So I, I know we, Jennifer had to drop. Um, yes. But yeah. Super appreciate you coming on um, and joining us, me today. Um, yeah, it's been great going through these visits with you and thank you to everyone that entered. Um, really appreciate it. And there'll be a wrap up blog post soon um, where you can see all the entries in one place. And we'll also be kicking off another Iron Quest round soon. So the first one for 2023, which is exciting. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, expect more details on that in the near future. But thank you, Dee, really appreciate you coming on today. It's been fun going through these visits with you. Thanks for having me and Jennifer, Sarah. We This was super fun. And thanks to everyone that contributed. These visits were awesome and really fun and exciting to go through. Yeah. Thank you so All right, much. Well, All right. Catch you later. Thanks. Bye. Bye.